Hi everyone, this is Jeremiah from Frontier Precision Unmanned and today I'm going to make a quick video on how to use Cloud PPK post-processing software to post-process your Mavic 3 Enterprise soft or <laughs> images. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to verify that we put the images off the Mavic 3 Enterprise onto your computer. Um, so you're going to want to pull just the entire folder over with everything that's in it. In addition to that, you're going to need your static base station um, files. Uh, I usually put that in a folder marked control and um, I usually export out in Rhinex format, which is what we're going to need. After we verify our data that is that it is on our computer, we're going to then go into Cloud PPK. And the first thing we're going to do is go to the top left and go to Import Drone Log File. We'll navigate to where our images are. And then we're going to click on the ppkraw.obs file and click Open. After we click Open, you're going to see that there's going to be a green check mark right here. And then we're just going to go to the second step. In the second step, it's going to want to have the timestamp MRK file. So since we opened the drone log file already, it should be open to the proper folder. And I'm just going to hit open again. And you'll see another checkbox. After that, it's going to be our base, base station Rhinex file. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to open the Rhinex file from my computer. I'm going to go to my control and I'm going to click on my 23O file and click open. So this area right here, so this is if you went through and you either set up your base station over a known point and you would go through and enter in your known point right here in WGS84 lat long and ellipsoidal height. Um, I did not set up over a known point. Um, the other way to get that point correction or your static base correction um, position is you can send it out to Opus or RTX and you will send that out and then they will email you back that Opus solution and then you would type that information right here. Um, but at this point, I'm not going to Opus it. I just want to run through the um, workflow with you guys real quick. Um, but since I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to click read base station coordinates from Rhinex file header. This is also the one you want to use if you're downloading static files from a core's base station. Uh, next couple of things that you want to take note of is going to be your antenna or your antenna type, your phase center, and your your base station antenna height right here. Um, for the most part, this should auto populate. This should come out just fine. Um, but over here for the base station antenna height, make sure you verify. Um, your measure up for this because that definitely does matter. Um, but after we verify all this information, we're just going to click OK. And then we're going to process our GPS data next. So after I press process GPS data, it's going to look at the base station data, it's going to look at the photo tags, it's going to look at that rover OBS file, and then it's going to go through and do its GNSS processing. Um, if you look over here on your right, you'll see the information, the mission stop start time, where the base file is located, the base start stop time, um, how many camera events there were, and then you see this nice little image right here of this green line up here is where the flight was, and this is how long the base was setting. So this tells us that our entire flight was within the static session of our base. Um, but as you can see, once it's done processing, we can go through and see that it's gone through and correlated the photos um, with those GPS tags and corrected the image tags right here. Um, you can look down here to get your little residuals, um, and then you have a little um, legend right here to tell you that pretty much all these points should be within three centimeters accuracy. Um, once this part's done and you're happy with what you see, we'll go to image folder. And again, since you open the files, it should default to that folder, but we can check and it's in the right folder. I'm gonna click okay again. And then now it's gonna sort through the photos and it's gonna start applying IMU data or applying that IMU data and whatnot from the, um, from the images and combining the images or the image IMU data and tags 
um, with the corrected tags. So we'll give this a second to work itself through. Yeah, the more photos you have, the more time it generally takes, as usual. But all in all, the PPK process isn't too bad. Um, I find that this workflow and this process is worth the hassle um, when you compare it to the reliability issues that you can have with um, flying via RTK processing. All right, now it took a look at the photo data, it took a look at the base station data and the correction data, and now right here, this is where we go to do a couple more things. Like if we want to go through and change our projection, um, export our ground control target coordinates, this is a, a separate feature within Cloud that you can go through, um, but we'll talk about that later. You can export photo coordinates, so if you wanted to export the photo coordinates in a CSV to use in another post-processing software, you can export it as a CSV. And then right here, this is where it is going to take those corrected uh, tags and inject them or replace them within the EXIF or metadata of each individual photo. Um, but for here, what I want to do, and one of the most important steps on why when you go and post-process your data via um, RTK process, uh, you'll notice when you go um, post-process that data and it comes out you'll see that it's not going to be where it needs to be in the in the vertical axis but the horizontal axis is good um, that's because you didn't take into account or the um, geoid height was not taken into account so in order for us to get that data to the proper geoid height um, in the US we're generally going to be at geoid 18 or 12b so for here i'm going to go into um, this right here where it says height reference or you can click on this button right here pops up the screen um, we're going to keep it in wgs84 but under height reference we're going to click select and i'm going to go to north american geoid models and i'm going to click the geoid that i shot my control in or the geoid in which your um, survey data is in uh, that's what you need to do so for me, my survey data, I will always use Geoid 18 until the new one comes out. So I'll select it, hit OK. And if we look right here, you'll see the height being like 333. If we hit apply, it's going to go through and apply that Geoid offset to get it to where it needs to go. Um, once we go through and apply that height reference, all we need to do is tag those um, tags into the photos. Uh, and then for us to go through and do that, I'll show you something real quick right here. So if I go into this image, 01, and I go to properties, details, and I'll scroll down, we can see 368, 268 right here. And then you'll see it should change to 368, 468 right here. So I'm going to hit geotag photos. So now it's going to go through and take the corrected data and the geoid offset and inject those into the images and rewrite those file tags. Again, the more photos you have, the longer it'll take. Pretty much once this finishes, once Cloud finishes tagging all those photos, we're done with Cloud PPK and you're done with the Cloud PPK process or just PPK process in general. Um, so to recap, what we're gonna, what we do is we first move all the files from our drone onto our computer. We make sure we have our control base station files. Once we have our files inside the folder, we're gonna open up Cloud import a drone, drone log file, which is the, was it the PPK raw.obs file. We're going to import our timestamp MRK file. 
Uh, we're going to import our base station Rhinox file, and then we're going to go through and either enter in our, our point that we set up on top of, or if we're going to put in our Opus correction point, or we're going to pull the base station point directly from the header of the Rhinox file you put in. Um, but once you do that, you process your GPS data. Once your GPS data is processed, it should look like this right here, nice and all green. Um, once that's done, you open your image folder, you click OK because you're selecting the folder where all your images are, and then it goes through, reads the photos, and then the image coordinates table pops up. For the US, again, we generally shoot in G0818, so I change my height reference to 18. Once I change that, it changes the height and it adds the offset. And then lastly, I geotag the photos. Um, once it's done geotagging the photos, you are done with Cloud PPK. So there's really not much after this besides um, putting it all directly into either Pix4D or Trimble, TBC, APM, or any other post-processing software or what have you. Um, I'm gonna scroll down right here. And again, we can see that um, it re-tagged the images with the updated positions. So this was a workflow for Cloud PPK uh, to PPK photos from a Mavic 3 Enterprise. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. You can find us at uas at frontierprecision.com. Thank you guys. I'll talk to you later.